Hi Year 5, Mr Philpott's here with your next maths lesson. Today we are focusing on three-dimensional shapes. Um, however, before we get on to that, um, I'd like you to have a go at a little number puzzle. It's a nice little puzzle because it's good for practicing our mental arithmetic, um, thinking about different strategies like number bonds, etc., which we've looked at in the past. So I'm just going to bring it up onto the screen and then you can see it with me. So you'll see... It almost reminds me of it looking down uh, at a temple uh, as if you were up above and you can see all these numbers uh, marked out in the yellow squares. Anyway, the puzzle is this. The aim is to get the highest total. As it says at the bottom, you can start anywhere and collect five numbers by following the paths. So you should see the lines that are joining all the numbers together. Now, you can't jump or go back over a path twice, so you can't go back the way you came. Uh, and the aim is, as I've said, go around and collect five numbers, add those five together, and what is the highest total you can create? I've had a little go myself, and I got to 37. However, I think if I tried it uh, for a little bit longer, there might be uh, a higher total there. So have a go, email in what you find. Um, Maybe you can find the, the lowest total as well. And what's the difference between the two totals that you find? Um, but it'd be fun to have a go. Uh, and we always like a little bit of competition. So see what you can come up with. Okay, so moving on to the main focus of our lesson today. We are investigating three-dimensional shapes and trying to do some identifying when we see them drawn in 2D. Okay, so to begin with, you should see on the screen... Uh, a poster which we can pause at this point and keep coming back to this moment because what you should see is an example of a number of three-dimensional shapes and you'll see across the top that there are three headings we have got vertices we've got faces and we've got edges so okay so I've raided my son's toys uh, to help explain some of this vocabulary so this is uh, from Charlie doesn't know I've got them but he's only one so I think he'll be okay so here is one of the shapes that fits into the puzzle. Now, it's three dimensions because it has got uh, a width, it has got a depth, and it's got height. So those are the three measurements that we would use uh, with this particular shape. Now, this one in particular is not the width, length, and height. It's not the same all the way around. So it's not a cube, it's a cuboid. Now, thinking about that, vo the vocabulary, We'll start with vertices. So these are kind of like corners, I suppose. So we've got one, two, three, four. And then if I turn it around, five, six, seven, eight. Edges. So this is where we have got the, the vertices joining up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I flip it over, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then the third um, part of vocabulary was faces. So these are the so we're looking on this particular shape, the flat faces. So we've got one, two, three, four all the way around, five, and one uh, and one other, and six. So that's the cuboid. A word that we'll come across a lot with three-dimensional shapes is prism. So I've got some examples uh, of prism. So this one is a with a bear on it, is a triangular prism. And what you'll see looks reminds me of a Toblerone uh, kind of, which is a nice type of chocolate. So it's got a triangle, and if I flip it around, triangle there. So when you know it's a prism, if I was to cut through this shape, you would still see that triangle. So that tri two-dimensional triangle face runs all the way through the shape. So here, here is another example. So this one has got, the face has got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sides to it. So have a think, what do you think we might call that one? This is six-sided. Yep, it is a hexagonal prism. So again, I know it's a prism because if I cut through the middle of it, I would still see that hexagon shape running all the way through. Uh, and just like the other ones, let's just double check. So we have got vertices. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six at this end, and then six at that end. One, two, three, four, five, so 12 altogether. Uh, edges. This is a bit, bit more on this one. So I've got six edges there and another six. And then going around it, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got 18. And then faces, 
we've got one at each end and then count around it one two three and six around it so that's eight faces all together so you should be able to see that on the poster as i mentioned so go back to that at any point if you need to okay so we're going to have a look at a few problems and puzzles using this vocabulary today uh, so we'll start off with this one can you name a 3d shape that has at least one of these 2d shapes as a face so can you think of a three-dimensional shape that has a square face one that has a circle face and one that has an equilateral triangle face have a go at independently if you're not sure go back to the poster write down what you think pause the video and see if you agree with the uh, options that I have come up with so they look a little bit like this so shapes with a square it could be a cuboid it could be a cube or rather interestingly it could be a square based pyramid you should see at the bottom there you can see that square face shapes with a circle so it could be a cylinder so you think like a tin of beans um, or a cone think about something that you put your ice cream in if you where the ice cream is cannot will often be circular and finally uh, with an equilateral triangle it could be the prism uh, like the one that i showed you a moment ago or a tetrahedron which is made up of uh, four triangles uh, stuck together which is pretty good well done if you've got those moving on so this time what is the name of each 3d shape shown below I mentioned a couple of them or for all of them already so this is a good way of checking if you have been listening and picking up this vocabulary so what is the name of each of the three shapes and which could have could be the odd one out and why so have a go without looking at the poster first and if you're stuck go back to the poster and pause take as long as you need and then come back to this bit uh, and see if you agree with the same as I have got so we've got a cube we've got a tetrahedron and we've got a square based pyramid as for the odd one out I think you probably guessed we can justify it so each of the three could all be the odd one out for a different reason so cube could be the odd one out because it's not a pyramid it does not have any triangular faces the other two do and it does not have an apex However, the tetrahedron could be the other one out because it has the fewest number of faces. It does not have any square faces. Or the square base pyramid could be the other one out because its faces are not at all, sorry, are not all the same 2D shape and it has an odd number of vertices. So well done if you've got any of those. Excellent stuff if you manage to work out a reason for each of the shapes. That's superb reasoning. I mentioned that uh, in previous lessons using our knowledge to explain right how about this true or false then so a cube picture a cube in your mind visualize it is the only 3d shape to have square faces is that true or false if it's true prove it if it's false prove it how do you know certainly needs you to do more than just guess uh, one or the other pause the video decide what you think have a reason ready uh, and then I'm going to move on to my reason. And my reason looks like this. It's false. A cuboid can have two square faces at opposite ends to each other. Prisms can have square faces joining the opposite ends. And if you think about it, we've seen some shapes already that have square faces that are not cubes. So you're already, hopefully, applying that previous knowledge. All right. Now, moving on to something a little bit trickier, in my opinion. So we're going to look at a a net so on the on the right hand side where there's no color we have a net for a square base pyramid so a net is something that if you were to cut that out uh, and fold up the triangles up from the square you would create the three-dimensional square base pyramid okay so the question with this net is if you were to color it color the net for this square base pyramid what would it look like so if we wanted to create the pyramids on the left with the green, the blue and the red, what would we have to color on the net to create that pattern? OK, so you have to imagine coloring it in and then imagine folding it up into the complete 3D shape. And how will it look? You want it to look like the image on the left. You might want to 
uh, draw the net at this point, cut it out, fold it yourself, have a little go. Um, often that's the best way so that in future you don't need to do that once you've experienced that. Um, and the answer then, once you've had a go and you've paused it, looks like this. So you would have the red square as the base and then we've got the green and the blue uh, connected to each other. Now we don't know the other side, so we've left those blank for now. Okay, right. Now we've had to go a few problems together. I'm going to introduce your chilies for this week. And well done again for everyone who keeps emailing in uh, your efforts. Super, super stuff here, five. So chili one. And again, at any point, you can go back in this video, go back to the poster at the start, or back to the bit where I was showing you uh, some of Charlie's puzzle shapes, if that helps. Right, number one then. Name three different 3D shapes that have at least one rectangular face. Okay, rectangular face. There might be some at the bottom of the screen right now. Part B, name two different 3D shapes that have a curved surface. So we haven't really mentioned anything with a curved surface uh, other than a um, talked about cylinders earlier, but is that the only thing? Uh, and then part C, two different 3D shapes that have more than four, but fewer than eight vertices. Try and do it without the poster first. Picture it in your mind, and then you can use the poster to check. Think of that as your steps to success today. Number two, thinking about these 3D shapes, which could be the odd one out and why? And can you think of more than one example? So like we did together, could each one be the odd one out for a different reason? So I think a shape number one is the odd one out because, and then give you a reason. That's that's what we're looking for there. Right, chili two, true or false. So a cylinder is a type of prism. And if you're not sure, go back to the example that I showed you with Charlie's shapes because I talked about prisms there. Uh, B, a cuboid is the only 3D shape to have rectangular faces, true or false. And then C, a triangular prism has six vertices. Does it? Prove it. Maybe try and draw it. Um, can you maybe find one in your home that you can count to check? All right, question two. Arnold is looking carefully at a square-based pyramid, and he says, this 3D shape has the same number of faces as vertices. Can you investigate to find out if it's true for all pyramids? Uh, and what have you learned from your investigation? What are your findings? Look about what he's saying. So he said, this 3D shape has the same number of faces as vertices. Is that always the case for pyramids? Can you find out and prove it one way or the other, please, year five? And then chili three. So Sarah wants to create a net of the cube shown above. Um, however, I'm actually, it says above, but actually I put it below. So we'll just move past that. Uh, how should she colour the net to ensure it looks like the picture shown? So you can see we've got some grey, blue, red and yellow. Notice how the red and yellow are joined together at an edge, but the blue isn't. Uh, maybe your best method with this one is to draw some nets and shade them in and see if you can cut them out and create the cubes. The smaller you do it, the fiddlier it is. So maybe try and do a few larger ones. Uh, and as it says, is there more than one way to achieve it? So how many solutions can you find? Right, Year 5, good luck with this. Please continue to email your learning into the Year 5 address. And again, if there's anything you're not sure about, please use the same address to ask us as well. Uh, best of luck for the week, and I look forward to seeing you for maths again next week. Well done.